Hello, and welcome to this edition of Salima Speaks. Well, you know, I always have interesting black men on my show, and today is no exception. I have a really interesting man who has a very interesting name, Damascene Pierre Paul. And this is him right here. Hello, Damascene. Good evening, Salima. How are you? I'm fine, and happy birthday. <laughs> Thank and you so thank much. you for doing my show on your birthday. I'm very honored. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. <laughs> very good. And Damascene, that's a very odd name. What is the origin of that name? Uh, actually, I'm Damascene Jr. My father is Damascene Pierre Sr. Okay. And the name is actually Hebrew. It comes from the region of the world known as Syria. Okay. Uh, the capital of Syria is Damascus. And in ancient times, they called the people of uh, Damascus, Damascene, and it oh, actually like that. means intertwining uh, very rare metals together. So it's okay. a very unique name. Yes. Really? Yeah. And so where are you from originally? I'm originally from Haiti. I was mm -hmm. born in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Uh, my family and I moved to America in 68, uh, and I was two years old when I came to America. Now, have you been back to Haiti since you've been here? Yes, I've been back twice. I, I went back when I was 10 years old, and I was there right before the, the earthquake. Really? Yes, right. Now, so obviously you knew people that were involved in the earthquake. Yeah, it was some family members and distant cousins, and, you know, yeah, it was quite a tragedy. So you haven't been back since then? No, I haven't been back since the earthquake. And actually, the hotel we stayed at uh, was pulverized. Really? It was uh, uh, Le Chateau. Uh, it was one of the prestige hotels in Port-au-Prince, and it was flattened. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so have you heard from your family? Oh yes, this, we've this uh, been in touch, and certain relatives, some of them lost uh, family members, and yes, we've been in touch with most of the immediate people, and some of them are okay now. Okay. Yes. So now, when do you, how often do you go back? Uh, well, I was only back in Haiti, actually, twice in my lifetime. Really? And uh, I plan on going back uh, again, because my parents, uh, my grandmother and mother started a school in the church in Haiti, up in the mountains, uh, in Hinch, which really? is where my grandmother's from, yes. Okay. And the school's been around for about 30 years, and it's put a few students even through college in Haiti. Is it still there? Oh, it still exists. That's why I went there uh, right before the earthquake. I did. Uh, I bought some shoes uh, to the school up in the mountains. Actually, a good friend of mine's, Milky Joe, which is Wyclef's uh, sister, okay. she has a charity organization, and I stopped at her aunt house in Port-au-Prince, and she gave me some shoes. And I took it up, up in the mountains in a small prop plane to wow. go see the school. It was a great experience. So it wasn't the school wasn't wasn't interrupted by the oh, earthquake. Oh, not at all. Because up in the mountains, it wasn't affected. The earthquake didn't affect the region up in the mountains. It's oh. more or less the city area. Okay. Yes. Okay. And I understand that you're a producer and manager and all that good stuff. <laughs> As a matter of fact. He managed one of my favorite stars. You must tell me what you can about Miss Patty LaBelle. Oh, Miss LaBelle, a fantastic human being. Uh, and you were her manager for, for many years, huh? Uh, a decade, about 10 years. Wow, yes. okay. Yes, it was a great experience. Miss LaBelle is, uh, I, I actually, I appreciate her more as a humanitarian than I do as actually a singer. Really? Yes, because she was someone who um, had tremendous amount of influence on a world level, more or less than as an entertainer. I've seen the world with her. I've met heads of states with her. And uh, she's a very kind woman, very generous person, yeah. So, really? Uh, yes, ma'am. So she is, she's not like, well, of course, everybody hears that she's like a diva. <laughs> but you know what? She has a right to be a diva, Absolutely. you know, because I may be a diva one day. Who knows? Some people say I am now, but I'm not. But anyway, <laughs> I think that, you know, she has a right to, to be who she is, Absolutely. you know. But I don't think that she's a bad person. Oh, so no. what do you think about her personally? Can you say stuff? Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Without getting in trouble, oh, no, I know. Not at all. Ms. <laughs> Bell, is, she was very, very kind to me. She was like a mother. Really? Uh, okay. Yeah, very much. She was very concerned about, are you eating? Uh, are you making the right decisions You know, during your everyday life? She was someone that always motivated you to stay focused and stay positive. So I, you know, it was almost being a, around a, a sacred mother. That's okay. the type of description I could have about Miss Pat. Yeah, she's she's one of my favorites. She's very talented. You know, if if you talk to her, you may want to ask her to, you know, come on, Salima speaks. I love to have her. Oh, well. <laughs> she may. Yeah, you know, serious. You yes, know, talk to her. I would love to definitely love to have her. Yes, ma'am. You know, so now, so you you have your own production company. Or yes. Uh, what basically, that? what I'm doing now is I'm pitching a few television shows. I have a few projects I'm working on. Okay. Actually, one project I can discuss now is a project called How Harlem Saved the King. Okay. Uh, is actually produced and directed by Al Cohen, is a gentleman that I'm doing business with from Harlem, New York. He has a very uh, prominent uh, entertainment company, 
and he uh, produced a documentary on Dr. King that most people are not aware of. Really? Uh, absolutely. In 1958, actually, Dr. King was doing a book signing in Harlem, New York, and uh, Dr. King was a great author. And it was packed house, and the woman walked up to Dr. King and um, asked him, are you Dr. King? This was at the book signing. And wow. Dr. King said, yes, I am, you know, very respectful as the man he is. And the woman turned around and plunged a letter opener in Dr. King's heart. I heard about that, yeah, yes. I heard about that. So, and when that happened, Dr. King was calm and cool, you know, the authorities quickly apprehended the woman, and Dr. King was relaxed. They said he had such a spirit with him wow. that it was amazing. So uh, they quickly escorted him to the hospital, and the doctors that actually worked on Dr. King, Mr. Al Cohen, actually kept in touch with everybody. He has everything documented, and the doctors spoke so highly of King, and Dr. King and the doctor kind of like their, their lives parallel each other throughout their careers. And this man, if Dr. King would have sneezed, the Dr. King that we know today, we wouldn't have known. Wow. So this doctor saved his life, okay. and we know Dr. Martin Luther King today as the man who accomplished all these great things. But wow. Harlem, and in, at that time, the media was portraying Harlem as a very negative place, and they almost, Harlem, the citizens of Harlem actually turned on Dr. King, but that's not the case. Mr. Cohen is showing how Harlem came together and supported and helped Dr. King. Okay. And that's one part of, of our great history that's right. not even being told. Right. So did they ever honored. say why she did that? Because I remember hearing about well, that. Well, that was the thing. That was one of the things that about, the, I don't want to give the documentary okay. away, but that's <laughs> part of what the investigation is, is that uh, Mr. Cohen is shedding some light okay. to this strange woman that did this. And of course, Dr. King continued on, but what really happened to this woman and who was she? Right. So that's one of the, some of the things that this documentary explored. Oh, wow. Well, you must come back on my show to tell me more about that. Oh, I'll be that. honored. I'll and be have, very you know, honored. Everybody come back on. That's Absolutely. very interesting. I'll be very honored yeah. to do that. So, so let's, let's talk about you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, because I'm always i always interested in, you know, in black men. You know, yes. that's, that's how I start my show. Yes, you know, what makes you tick and, you know, things like this. So, so tell me, are you in a relationship now? Uh, no, I'm a, I'm a sincere bachelor. Okay. Um, uh, by choice, obviously. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. That is by choice. And uh, it's, it's a blessing, you know. I mean, of course, I would love to have that significant person that I can love and, you know, support me and, and, and I could care for. But, you know, I'm very concerned and focused with my career okay. and trying to move my career in a positive direction. Not saying that having a relationship wouldn't be uh, positive, but at this point right now, my main focus is to continue moving forward. I, I, I love to be happy. Anybody, you know, everybody wants to be happy, but mm -hmm. I just, sometimes when you have, when your focus is on your career, it becomes a competition with the one that you love because you're focusing a lot of time on something that you love almost as much as your heart. Exactly. And the conflicts can be quite devastating <laughs> sometimes. So, you know, until I achieve certain goals in my life, that's really where my focus is. And you know, it, it's, it's a shame, especially with, because I'm, I'm, I think I'm experiencing that also, because mm -hmm. this is what I love to do. Yes, I, of course, I would love to have somebody else in my life, but right now, this is my baby. Respect. You know, this is what I want to do. Yes, ma'am. And having somebody else, they may not understand that. That's true. And I know with, with you, with men, of course, when, women, we need all the attention. And so, if you're, how dare you're going to a meeting? How dare you're doing this? Yes, you, you have to pay attention to me, so I can definitely re relate to that. Thank you. But um, so, when you do date, what kind of women do you like? Oh, uh, actually, you know, growing up, the way my mother and my sisters, I have three sisters, and okay. the way my mother raised me is my sisters are like my mother's sisters. So they still school me to this day. And uh, I, you know, I, I, I don't really have a preference, and I just, as long as a woman is beautiful. She's non you know, she's not about drama and definitely. Good luck with that. Come on. <laughs> Come yeah, well, on. You know, I mean, well, I mean, no, I don't. All women have some kind of drama, and you know that you wouldn't want a woman that didn't because she would be too boring. No, well, it depends on what kind of drama. I understand, okay. natu I understand natural life drama, but okay. I just don't like volatile women that just okay. all of a sudden they want to be destructive. That's right. frightening. Right. But, uh, you know, life is full of challenges in, in itself, so there is drama in life. Exactly. And with a good woman, a good mate, together, y'all can, you know, you know, withstand the drama together, but not when, you know, it's, it's causing you to be apart. That's very painful, and I, right. I don't care for that. But I don't mind. I, I actually like a woman that's sincere and honest, and she's beautiful. Okay. I don't beautiful inside and outside. Absolutely. Yeah, the body type is not, I'm not big on that, because sometimes, you know, God can take that away. Right. And are you still going to love that person? 
Right. So the, the key to me is really loving someone that's true and rich inside and, you know, that's sincere. That, to me, is eternal. Really? Yeah. It's and do you like older women, like younger women? You what, know, do you have a preference with age? Um, not necessarily. Number one, as long as a woman is, is mature, she's of legal age, number okay. one. That's, <laughs> that's attractive. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, and I, I don't mind age because um, sometimes you can learn in my opinion, you can learn the science of love from an older woman because she mm -hmm. really appreciates the little things that you do. Right. Where sometimes women that are younger, they don't appreciate the subtle things as much. They're more into material things. Somewhat, yes. And they just don't have, the, I don't know, they just haven't slowed down enough to hear the pulses of love. And okay. I think that an older woman can do that. So okay. usually more women that are mature. And sometimes you have women that are young in age, but they're very mature. They've had life experiences where they're, they've become wise or they've been schooled by wise women. Right. So, you know, I don't want to say that age is always a necessity, but a woman that is, you know, well seasoned okay. is extremely, uh, to me, that's, that's very attractive. Now, have you had a lot of drama in your life with women? Well, I've had my share, I will say. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think in order to love or to be in any sincere relationship, you're going to have drama. Right. The, the thing is, is how you deal with the drama when it happens. And then, you know, in hindsight, looking at some of my past relationships, I, you know, I kind of understand why I went through some of the things I went through. And I, I've, I've forgiven any situations that I've been in because that's part of life. Right. And it helps mature me and it helps make me a wiser person today. So I don't, you know, I don't hold grudges against any situations I've been in in my past. I just wish the people in my life a lot of love and I hope they find the love right. that they may not have found with me or I didn't find in them. I don't right. no hard feelings now. Okay, well, thank you for that. We're gonna come back with that though. And uh, we're gonna take a little break here. Absolutely. And uh, we'll take a little break and we'll be right back with Mr. Damasini. Hello, and welcome back to this wonderful show with this interesting black man, Mr. Damasin Pierre-Paul. Hello again. Very good. Very good. And we were talking about relationships and stuff that I like. <laughs> okay, so um, you, you seem to be very uh, modest and, you know, very nice guy. Although I looked at some of your pictures on Facebook and everything, and you, um, you're still very attractive. Oh, thank you. Um, as you were a younger man, you were even you were like really fine oh, thank <laughs> you, you, know, so you, much. you had dreads and everything yes, I saw this picture. now have you dealt with a lot of women in your life I mean would somebody like look at you and call you a player well that's very strange that uh, it's funny because today that word is uh, expressed in a grad you know in a real popular way like right. to be a player is actually good but when I was growing up back in the 70s and the 80s, actually, if you was considered a player, it was a bad thing. Well, you know, it is still a bad thing. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> okay. I've noticed a lot of rappers, you know, the more yeah. playmakers, you know. Yeah. Women seem, actually, women seem to like a man, you know, that's quite exciting like that. Uh, well, you know, you can be exciting, but not a player. I agree. You know, but you understand when I say player. I think so. And, because um, like I said, I have looked, looked you up on, on Facebook. Of course, I, I do that. And, um, I have, I'm not going to say any names, of course, because I'm not like that, but I've, I have met uh, one or two women that have dealt with you in the past, yeah. and they said that you were a player. A player. Yeah. Well, I, I think the way I like to look at that is sometimes uh, you might be in a relationship with a, with a woman, and you make it very clear to her your position. You okay. know, I'm a bachelor ID, and the okay. woman knows that from the okay. beginning. And uh, she insists on changing you. Right. She, her motive is, I don't care what you tell yep. me, I'm going to change it. And then what some of these women do is they get around their girlfriends mm -hmm. and they paint this picture that the relationship is great, you know. Right. And inside the relationship, they actually cheat you out of love. Like in wow. the relationship you are with, with them, they don't affectionately love you and adore you like that. But when they get around their friends, it becomes popular and say, that's my man. Right. So when they see all the grief on the girlfriend's face, oh, you know, it's instantly and it's easy to jump on a bandwagon and say he's a dog and he's a player. Right. Because the girl can cry wolf and say, oh, I'm, I'm being taken advantage of. But I found in my life, and you asked me this question, have I dealt with a lot of women in my life? Actually, it was just the opposite for me. Yeah. And, it, and it's, it's hard for people to believe that I am sincere because, oh, the way you look, the way I look sometimes actually is like a curse. Right. Because when you supposedly uh, look uh, attractive, 
uh, people assume that the world is handed to you, but actually it's harder for you because people come at you and make you work harder for the simplest exactly. things. Exactly. So I don't find that to be an advantage, you know, and it's funny, sometimes they say, we always tend to like or want what someone else is. What else? What, what? What? Someone else had. Yes, exactly. And uh, I found that in my life. I mean, I, I, I actually I got kicked around a lot in relationships because women assume this and they assume that, and uh, they they some in some relationships they were very difficult. For so, you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I mean, to be a player, if you make it clear to a woman that you want to date. Because other ethnic groups say they're dating and they can go to the bar one week with Jane and a couple <laughs> weeks later they go back with Barbara. Right. And it's all, it's all good. Right. But I find with people of color, if you do that, uh-uh, last week he was with, you know, it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but if it's everything if we're dating, what is all the strings attached? So I do find it to be a little difficult. Well, you know, honestly, and, and you brought up a, a point that a lot of times you will see, people see relationships differently. Like you may see a woman and, and in your mind you're just dating casually dating, but to her, she's already bought the wedding dress. <laughs> you know? yes, so no matter what you say to her, yes. you know, we're, we're friends, we're dating or whatever, in her mind, she's already decided who you are to her. Exactly. And if you're not, if it, it turns out that you don't want to be more than just somebody that, that, you, that she sees now and then, or somebody that she's dating, you don't want to take it further, then you become a dog, you become a player, you, you've used me, you've hurt me, but in the beginning of the relationship, you, you said what it was and she agreed to it, Absolutely. but then as it goes on, you know, maybe you're so wonderful, <laughs> she decides that she, you know, she wants more. Well, yeah, and that's correct, you know, and I find at the same time that the, as a person is peeling you apart and isolating you so you can be more focused on them, actually they still have activities going on in their wow. lives. Okay. Absolutely, and they're very popular, and but they're not doing what you were doing with the same situation, but then they have a lot of male friends too right. that are, you know, constantly talking to them and constantly they're having meetings with them. So sometimes I find it's a, just a game, like right. stop playing games. If you really want a relationship, let's be happy. Let's start the relationship out where I make you, I, I constantly keep you happy, you keep me happy, and let's grow in happiness. And as we grow, and you're happy, I'm happy, now we can talk about relationships, now we can talk about the future. But I think what happens, and in my experience, I've been in relationships with from the beginning, they're already talking about relationships and what I'm going to do and what I'm not going to do. No, 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 no. Okay. Let's grow. I'm not a child. I mean, right. as a man, right. we spend most of our lives grow, wanting to grow up away from our mothers right. so we can be independent. Exactly. Not to go, get into a relationship where we're already, you a little boy again. Exactly. Not in that way. Exactly. We like to be nurtured and loved and adored by a woman, but not in a controlling way. Right. Usually in life as a man, if I may, I think that you usually give that power to one woman at, at a time, which is your mother. And then right. sometimes when you meet that right woman, your mother pass you on to her. Mm. And she allows her to be that woman, and that's okay, but some women come and they wanna demand that right from you from the beginning. Exactly. So I, I, you know, I have difficulties with that. And it's not always fair, disgruntled lovers. I have a, my philosophy is, you're gonna have problems in every relationship. Right. And, and at one point you was loving that person, that person was loving you. Okay, it didn't work out. Why now I have to spill hate? Well, exactly. I'm going to talk negative about you. Okay, exactly. move on. That's my philosophy because I don't believe in holding grudges or disliking people because something didn't work out between us. It, may, it wasn't probably meant to be. Exactly. So let's move on. And I wish you the best in life, and hopefully you wish me the best because I believe that if you once loved that person, you should always love them. Maybe in a wow. different way, but okay. you should always keep that love for that person. Okay. Even if she's done something, like, really bad to you, I uh, mean, come yes, on. Yes, ma'am. I've actually, you know, well... God has always taught us, for those of us who really believe in the Most High and how we identify him or her, that you know, we should learn to forgive. And who are we to judge and hold, judges, uh, hold grudges against people? Because sometimes we don't know the real circumstance that that person is dealing with, why they do what they do. And not all of us have degrees in psychology, right. so we can't always psychoanalyze people. So I learned in my life that, you know what, I have to take certain things and experiences for what they were at the time in my life because it's only going to teach me to be a better person and wisdom only comes through pain. Mm -hmm. And you only learn to be wise when you suffer. And if you're strong enough to survive that suffering experience, you really have a sense of humility and love 
And that's really what propels you. So for to sit around and hold or harbor energy, to me, exactly. that's negative energy. Exactly. That's going to wear you down, exactly. and eventually you're going to implode. Right. So if you really, truly breathe success and you want to live with success, you got to learn to just, you know what, continue loving. Because then the most high will continue to bless you exactly. because you learn to forgive. That's exactly. just my philosophy. Exactly. And, and another thing, you know, so many women are controlling and they want to be in charge and they want to treat you like they're your mother and you better do this and you better do that but so many men have allowed them to do that yes. then when somebody like you comes comes along or somebody that's not going to allow a woman to control them like that then you become the bad guy yes. because she's so used to that yes. now yes. you know and now that she's used to that you're supposed to be that guy and then if you're not, it's like, he's a dog, he's no good. Because you didn't fit into what she wanted for you to be. That's correct. And I can't see you doing that, you know. Because a lot of times women, we want men that, that not, not me, of course, but men that we can control and yes. mold. But then once he's like that, he's no longer exciting. And we, does, we don't want him anymore. We'll break him, and then we don't want him anymore. Exactly. You know, so somebody like you, you can't be broken. And a lot of women aren't used to that. Yes. You know, so. That, that's very true. I've, I've learned that, as I mentioned earlier, my, the way my mother raised me, my mother always taught me, you know, don't go through life hurting women. Okay. Because she said that is a pain that you can never escape. You should always wow. go through life and try to, you know, be as fair and honest with women because you don't want to scorn women. And I think because of that, as some women know the legacy of being scorned, you know, they use that to their advantage. Right. And in some situations, there are men out there that are not deserving of the type of love that a woman exactly. can possess. So I think really what it is is, because I've, I've heard a lot of people of color, especially women of color, say there's no good black men out there. Right, and I don't think it's, that's no, true. No, not at all, because the sad thing is there's a lot of great black men yes. out there, and there's a lot of great black women, and in between is all the stuff. Yeah, exactly. We just all need to get through the stuff and then see each other on the other side and connect. And right. sometimes those relationships still may not turn out to be very happy, loving relationships, but guess what? You made a great friend, you, made a, you met a great person, you learned something from, and y'all continue to grow in life. Right. To me, love doesn't necessarily mean that you are in that kind of relationship where that's my woman and that's my man. Because right. sometimes you can benefit more from a great friendship and a, a richness with a woman as a woman can receive with a man. And who knows right. down the road? Right. Absolutely. Because exactly. now that's love. Because you've, you've went through so many changes and you went through so many experience with that person, you want to invest more. Now that's right. my love right there. So right. for me, I, I found that to be... And, and that, that's why some people say it, it's better to become friends. Uh, yes. But see now, like a, with a lot of men, if a woman says, says you're my friend, they know that's kind of like the kiss of death. Because if I deem a man you're my friend, then that's all you're ever going to be. So you can't get in your little mind, I'm going to work on her, because you're not. Because once I deem you are a friend, yes, you know, that's, that's all you are. But what you're saying makes so much sense. Because if you are a friend and you are around this person, the love can very well grow. I believe so. You know? But, but I think that's a man-woman thing, because I think men can do that. They can, you know, get to know a person and then they can start loving them. Whereas women, right away, he's going to be my friend or he's going to be my lover. No in between. And if she calls you a brother, you can cancel Christmas on that relationship <laughs> because you're her brother, you know. Okay. But uh, but what you said what you said makes makes a lot of sense. Um, but let me talk talk to me a little bit more about your about your business and where sure. people can can get in touch with you. Oh sure, uh, actually I have a website uh, is www.domdata.com. Okay. Um, Dom Dada D O M. Yes, D O M D A D A. Dom Dada dot okay. com. Okay. Um, basically, and what my company is about is uh, managing artists and different projects, uh, producing different shows. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned, we are shopping right now about three television shows. Uh, another show that we're shopping is called Touched by a Four Legged Angel. It's a husband and wife team in uh, Orange County, California, John Parish. And this show is about this dog they have called Sweetie, the lion dog. It's a beautiful mixed dog look like it's a Shih Tzu and a poodle. Mm -hmm. And the dog is extremely intelligent and the dog has such a personality. And they have used this dog to raise a lot of money for breast cancer awareness. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's one of the shows that we're shopping around. And uh, we have a few interests with Search Engine and uh, a pretty big producer out there in L.A. Uh, okay. 
with the name of Seacrest is pretty much interested in the project. So, you know, I try to keep my hand in a lot of different projects okay. uh, in the entertainment business. Wow, that's great. And let me ask you this, as a black man, how do you feel about having a, finally having a black president? And did you ever think that you would see that in your lifetime? Yes, I did. Did you? Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, I think- You're one of the few people. Well, I think one of the, if I may, one of my opinions uh, that I've experienced in my life is people of color, we tend to put things so far in the future. Mm -hmm. Like, we won't see this. Why not? We've been through so much. Exactly. Our time is now. Exactly. So what is wrong with seeing a black president, a, a, a wonderful first lady to have class and dignity, exactly. beautiful young black uh, 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 children in the White House that exactly. are intelligent and articulate? My, one of the things I've noticed in the entertainment industry, and no disrespect to rappers, because they all got to eat and they all struggle too, mm -hmm. but it's the glorification of ghettoism that I have a oh, problem wow. with. I mean, anybody who's of color, we know when to put it on, that right. we need to be tough. Right. But to, to constantly promote that image all the time, it's almost as if every black person, that's how we act. And right. that's, not, that's not, it's not cool. We, exactly. we, are, we are like the rainbow. We have many different um, flavors of ourselves, and exactly. I think it's important that we also present the articulate side of us. Exactly. And not everybody have to go to college to be articulate. Right. And you know, so why not show the the, the black people that really have sense and intelligence? So I think in the, to see a president that we, you know, to have in the White House to have so much class, and class exactly. he's so smooth with how yeah, he exactly. does everything. Exactly. I, I, I am very humbled, I am very honored, I'm very proud to. to see a man that I cannot truly identify with and say, yeah. that's my president. Exactly. So yes, I'm extremely humbled that, that I'm living to see a, 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 a black president with a black first lady and black first children. That's yes. such an honor. Yes. yes. And, and that's the thing, so many people think that just because he's black, He's, you know, we voted for him. But no, he's not only black, he's, he's intelligent. Absolutely. He's sincere. Yes, ma'am. And, and he's about something. And then yes. look at his wife, like you said. I mean, I could see her being the first black woman president. Absolutely. Even, you know. Absolutely. Because, because they, they've given us back our dignity. Yes, ma'am. So to speak. Yes, like you said, like the rappers and things like that, they've taken a lot away from the black families. But the president and his family has given us back our dignity. Yes. If, if nothing more, he's done that. I agree. And, and, and not to just, you know, make myself come off as if I'm against hip-hop. Actually, I'm part of the original hip-hop generation. Right, sure. And back then, way. when hip-hop came out, it was about making positive things out of the simplest situations exactly. in life. Exactly. So we enjoyed everything in life. We didn't try to paint the picture as if hip-hop was all about, you know, everything was perfect, but we took bad situations and we found happiness exactly and we spread right. that love in the industry and then you know there was the the the, the very conflicting part of the hip-hop generation mm -hmm. the, the crime and everything and we understood that but to exactly. glorify it and to make it I've, I've listened to some of the lyrics today and I mean bag them up put them in a thing I mean that's to me that's sadistic to me exactly. if I can identify if I can connect that I would say that's almost like heavy metal rap like how heavy rock music was with the satanic stuff that's how I look at some of the rap out here today. It's like, that's kind of sadistic. Right. But you know, the, the culture itself promoted happiness and love. That's exactly. what I remember about exactly. hip hop. And I'm going to close up now, and I thank you so much for coming on my show. Thank you. And you must come back with your other projects. Oh, thank because you. I think you're very interesting. I think you're very sincere. Oh, thank you. And, um, I don't believe all this bad stuff I heard about you. Oh well. <laughs> because you know, I, I, I get a feel and I know people. Yes, you know, and like I said, some of the stuff that I heard was from bitter, angry women that probably wanted to control you and but could not. <laughs> well, you said it, bitter, angry woman. So right. I guess they speak for itself. Right. Thank yes, you so much, Dama. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you all so much for tuning into this interesting version of Salima Speaks. And don't forget, love yourself, love others, and don't forget to stretch. Thank you. Bye-bye.